I said I was going to have a conversation this month uh, about PTSD. As most of you know, June is PTSD Awareness Month. And I work with veterans and civilian individuals with PTSD. I work with veterans, uh, combat PTSD. Uh, we do TBI, traumatic brain injury, sexual assault, uh, military sexual assault. Uh, and so I work with victims who find themselves dealing with probably one of the hardest mental struggles, I think, that as civilians who have been blessed not to have not experienced that, I don't think that a lot of civilians can relate. So I'm going to try to explain to you, to the best of my ability, what it's like to live with PTSD because a lot of times you'll hear, well, you know, don't think about it or, you know, you're just thinking about it too much or, and this isn't, PTSD isn't the practice of thinking about a bad memory. Um, it is not, it is one of the traumas that you do not disassociate from mentally or physically. It is so horrific that it takes you literally back to that point in time at the time of trauma. To provide a little context about uh, why it's become my passion and my purpose to help others with PTSD is I have been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress and um, mine is non-combat related but it definitely has been a struggle and I before and I'm gonna be real honest here before my trauma if you would have said well they have PTSD I would have thought well you know they need to quit thinking about it or they just need to be mentally stronger and and it, I think a lot of civilians think that to be honest with you because I had been I mean I've taken my life hits um, and I considered myself mentally supergirl you know and uh, but that day um, and it's still difficult that day I woke up at 4.30 in the morning, and as most of you know, we have an in-house breeding program. I have dedicated my life to developing a very strong service dog breeding program, and it has been about 30 years, so it's taken a long, long time. But again, I would do every day all over again. I had to start over, but I'm back. So I want as I want to educate this month for people who don't know what this is like. Um, PTSD is the, is the physical and mental response to a point in your life where it was survival. I've never, I've never experienced anything like it and I have, I've taken my share of life hits. It's not that I'm weak. I considered myself probably mentally, I prided myself on being mentally strong that I could handle stuff and um, that day uh, they changed me forever and it's been 12 years and there is still a physical and emotional and mental response to that trauma and if I could fight it if I could flick it off I mean you you have no idea people with PTSD would would love to be able to turn it off we don't want to go there but triggers there are triggers and I have some and people with PTSD most certainly always do so I want to share um, my PTSD revolved a uh, involved a fire as most of you know we have an in-house breeding program and I woke at about 4 30 one morning and found my nursery completely and entirely in flames now we suffered unimaginable we lost 22 dogs, and of those dogs were two litters, two purpose-bred litters. And um, we tried to save them. Um, the trauma of that, um, I think God in his mercy has taken that like a light switch. It flicked on and off. I remember bits and pieces of trying to do that. Um, what I remember next is kind of the aftermath. Um, 
And uh, I can tell you that for the first time in my life, I was brought to my knees. And I had a lady call me one time and, and tell me, I'm not really sure what I'm calling you, but I need to share a scripture. And it was in Isaiah about how he doesn't cause pain without purpose. And at the time, I didn't realize it. But I believe now, had I not experienced that, I could not identify, relate, nor would I be able to help or understand those with PTSD and training their service dogs to a level that restores hope and independence. So I want people to understand that it's not about weakness. It's not about irresponsibility. Keep having to take a break and I apologize to compose myself. Um, but even to this day, and I understand that there'll be a grief that I'll carry for the rest of my life. Um, they were very important to me. I'm very connected with my breeding program. And, and I, I may have misquoted the scripture. It may have been in Jeremiah. But anyway, um, when I get stressed out, I don't think clear. But it isn't about PTSD isn't someone who's too weak to be stronger than to think about it and they're fighting a battle and I couldn't there are levels of uh, of PT there I think there are severities of different severities of PTSD because they couldn't imagine what some of the horrors that our first responders and our veterans experience and come home and try to process we need to be more understanding and reach out open conversations we have veterans that are suicidal and there can't we can't as a people as a nation disregard or taboo subjects and not reach out and help or connect with those that feel like they're losing hope we need to bond together and I will say that PTSD or any kind of, uh, it feels forced on you. Um, it's not, it's not somewhere you want to go. It's not something you want to think about. Not something you consciously decide to relive. It feels like somebody walks up to you and dumps water on you. Like if you were getting, t t somebody tossed a five gallon bucket of water on you, you're just completely and instantly enveloped in trauma a a rerun it's 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 a reliving of one of the most horrific times in your life so at lifeline service dogs we're dedicated to those that 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 walk through that that struggle with PTSD because there is such a connection dogs reach us in ways human can't you know, dogs provide therapies that even the best of them can't succeed at. And so we do this at no charge to our applicants because I feel that this is something, this is a worthwhile, restoring hope. If you could just imagine for a moment what lost hope might feel like and being a part of helping restore that to someone, I think it's probably one of the most, I think it's one of the biggest blessings we can be to another individual. And before I go, I want to encourage anyone that's struggling with PTSD or suicidal ideation to reach out. Stay with us. There's hope. If you're a veteran, reach out at 1-800-273-8255 to the Veteran Hotline. If there's a great organization here in Arkansas called We Are the 22, reading from my bracelets, 1-855-932-7384. These are veterans with We Are 22 that are helping other veterans. And um, if you are a civilian and you're seeing this and you want to support, if you want to make a difference, and I mean truly make a difference and hand somebody hope and independence, please consider supporting an organization dedicated to PTSD, whether it's a service dog organization or not. These are not service dog organizations, obviously, but amazing organizations there for our veterans. Look, study, and really connect with and support 
uh, this it's I it's one of the greatest things I think we can do as humans is to help one another um, if you are a civilian please text or dial 988 for the suicide hotline I want to thank you again for allowing me to share my story I hope I have raised some awareness for PTSD and I'll see you later God bless everybody